Hi, everyone. So, a new day, a new terminal, don't you think? Um, alright, let's do this. We're definitely going to start with the official Rio repo on GitHub, because lots of interesting things are happening here I think you should know about. For starters, Rio is written in Rust, and while some code like its parser is taken from Alacrity, Rio doesn't actually use or depends to Alacrity crate. Another thing is that for drawing some UI components like theming and tabs, Rio uses the WA crate that is built specifically for Rio, and it originally was a fork of MacroQuad, a library for building games interfaces. So if you like what you see next, and before you make Rio your daily terminal emulator, I believe is a good idea to dig in a bit on the code to see exactly what is going on. Speaking of which, the development is very active with daily commits, but what worries me is that after two years of development, Rio only has 3.5k stars. In general, there isn't much community engagement. You won't see many people talking about it or opening issues and merge requests. And Rio's Discord activity is nowhere near that of Ghosty, even though Ghosty is still in private beta. So I suspect something bad is happening, but I just haven't figured out exactly what because from where I stand, I see a pretty damn good terminal. Let's quickly see its main features. And BTW, Rio has an amazing site, so I'll spend some extra time on it, okay? So, first, Rio is fast and fast, and modest too. Basically, the performance in terminal emulators is mostly like a developer's challenge, who's going to make the fastest by 0.01 milliseconds faster, because in 99% cases, the end user won't even be able to tell the difference. We have 24 bit colors, images with Sixel, which I've prepared another video specifically for Sixel support in GNOME, not sure when I'll find the time to publish that. It's cross-platform, and it doesn't say here, but there are plans to support the web too with WebAssembly. It supports font ligatures, which is a bonus if you do programming in Terminal, although personally I think there are confusing rather helpful. But that's just me! It has split panes, and it also has tabs, and both are super nice. And that's possibly my favorite. It supports RetroArch shaders. Some will slow it impossibly much, but we can run enough of them smoothly with some energy penalty, of course. Also, Ghosty can do that too, definitely a highlight of both terminals. Meanwhile, another cool thing with Rio website is the releases changelog. That makes sure you won't miss anything new, which I can't say for GNOME, that is super hard even for reviewers to discover what's actually new, let alone the poor users. For instance, in version 118, Rio added the split terminals and the retro art shaders too, no way current users would know unless they've seen the change logs. It's important, guys. Also important and also very well made is the configuration options page. The options are saved in a TomL file. We only save the options we override the defaults, and the format is very similar to Alacrity. Actually, many options are exactly the same as Alacrity, like the decorations property and more. Many more. Don't miss to check this, although Rio will automatically create a configuration file that explains almost all the options with comments. For example, on backend, we can set the Vulkan render, instead the OpenGL, that is, the default in Linux. We can also see how Rio looks with blur, you can see, but you can't touch. Um, if you're using GNOME... So, here we go, guys. I'm running Rio from master branch, so I run everything latest, and I'm gonna super quickly show you how it works. For start, for getting the rounded corners, I'm using the rounded window corners reborn shell extension, which is the primary reason why I'm not going to make Rio my default. That extension causes lots of weird artifacts. It is already broken on GNOME 48 development, so I had to downgrade for doing this video. And Rio with square corners or a title bar just looks crap. Also, I see there are some issues with glyphs rendering. For example, this one's missing. And that one is kind of bigger than it should. Another problem is with the blinking cursor. On Wayland and Vulcan, sometimes it gets disappeared for some milliseconds, which is enough time for making it impossible to use, so unfortunately I had to disable the blinking. Other times I've noticed actual Latin characters are rendered wrong, although this rarely happens, but yesterday it totally drove me nuts when it couldn't render the B letter. Um, I think I just placed some of the reasons why Rio is a low stars project. But those problems aside, that apart rounded corners, all the rest will probably get fixed. Rio is pretty neat. Control Shift and Tab will open a new tab, 
and we have these graphics that I totally love. We can also use classic tab styles though, we'll show you in a bit. The other thing is the split panes. Control Shift R for splitting vertical. Control Shift D for splitting horizontally. We can't currently resize them, but there is an issue open from the maintainer to add this with mouse. So hopefully on the next version would be there. Control Tab goes to Next Tab. Control Shift Tab goes to the previous. I guess that pretty much everything. Um, just wait to show you my config? So, I'm using Lucario theme. I only discovered it yesterday, but I like it a lot. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it for Zed. Bummer! Then it's some padding I set. But the most important is this one, I guess. By default, Rio and Linux will spawn new processes, which means it will create a completely new process, so we can set that to fork. That will create a child process, so theoretically should perform better. Although, in documentation says it hasn't great support in POSIX systems. That's where I disabled blinking, because it doesn't work very good. The default editor, Micro, the one I'm using right now, the size for new windows, and the disabled decorations. I so wish GNOME could do that, like Mac OS and makes every window corner round. Next is the renderer section, and I have set performance to high, which is mostly for discrete GPUs, and it basically affects the behavior of WGPU. Also, I have set the renderer to Vulkan, which is needed for using the shader's capability that I'm going to show you right away. So here I have a single filter, not going to load any other on this video, but it's one of my favorites, and it doesn't consume much GPU. Behold! The glow arrived. Not sure how it looks on video, but IRL looks awesome. Anywho, I'm going to disable it because screencasting might mess it up, but if you see it in future videos, that's how I'll be doing it. Then is my fonts options. Me nerd for the win. Finally is the navigation section, and one thing worth mentioning is the tab's style. As you see, I have set them to bookmark. That is also the default visual, but we can also set them to top or bottom tabs. Look, it puts the tab like that. On macOS, we'll use the native toolkit style, and at the moment, we can't use mouse to switch, but that's also on Rio's to-do list. So it's coming soon, together with the mouse events for resizing the splitters. So that's everything for now. It has some more features like setting kitty or vi key bindings, but I'm not going to cover those because I don't think I'll end up using Rio. The issue with the rounded corners is the main drawback for me, but otherwise, I believe it's a pretty decent choice. The journey for discovering the best terminal for GNOME continues. Stay tuned.